Okay, we're back live at Strata Conference, day one. So we're in the afternoon from three o'clock Pacific all the way to seven tonight when cocktails. We might go later if we can get startups, we can get VCs, we can get some scientists. We'll try to grab some people in the hallway. Uh, this is SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of Strata, year two. Uh, this is theCUBE, our flagship telecast. We go out to the events and talk to the smartest people we can find, extract a signal from the noise, and we don't care who they are. They could be venture capitalists, they could be entrepreneurs, they could be engineers and VP of marketing, they could be CEOs, as long as they got some signal, we want to share that with you. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm here with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. John, that was a great session we had with uh, Jeff Kelly reviewing the big data market size. Hopefully we can have him back, and as you say, we have all the movers and shakers on here at Strata. We'll be going all night. Um, I want to you know, thank our sponsors, and uh, we are very excited to, uh, to be here in year two. So uh, Let's talk about the updates for the folks out there uh, here about our sponsors. So uh, the Cube is now in its, I guess, second year, third, two and a half years. May of 2010 is so, when we, we just started the enterprise thing with, with Wikibon and SiliconANGLE. You guys were doing South by Southwest before that. So, so uh, you know, We've been doing some great work, and people love theCUBE, and we've had you know, hundreds and hundreds of guests. I think we're over 700 guests now on theCUBE. 700. Um, experts, gurus, friends, family, entrepreneurs, uh, journalists, writers, you name it. We've, if they're smart, they're talking to us. But Dave, we've had people, they don't understand theCUBE, so we finally found a nice business model. The business model is we get sponsored by people who love theCUBE, who love how we can bring the knowledge independently to you, all organic, no paid, interviews, none of that conversation stuff going on here. Pure independent analysis from wikibon.org or siliconangle.com teams. So we announced our last CUBE event at HP in Las Vegas that the CUBE is now ad supported. That means that the advertisers whose videos that you see are on the Cube, they are paying us money for those ad spots, and we love those ads. They could be three minutes in length, they could be six minutes in length, they could be YouTube videos, they could be funny. As long as they're educational, they're classy, and they, ex and they, they exchange knowledge, we love that. They can pay for that, they get a slot, and they rotate throughout the day. So you'll see ads from 1010 Data, Cloudera, not Cloud, no, MapR, Cloudera, 1010 Data, and Digital Reasoning, yep. okay? So the ads support us. The other thing that we do with theCUBE, because we do eight hours a day, um, normally people do an hour of footage, ESPN might, I mean CNBC might come in here and do uh, you know, 15 minutes, we do eight hours. And we take a couple of those hours and we do spotlights. And the spotlights can be supported via sponsorship. But the, the content is not paid content. We do all editorial work on that. So that's how we work, Dave, and it's been great. So tell us uh, what, who the sponsors are today. Yeah, so we just heard from uh, t uh, 1010 Data and MapR, right? Those guys um, are, are you know, pretty interesting, innovative companies. They made the Jeff Kelly uh, list of, uh, of pure plays, as did uh, Cloudera and Digital Reasoning. So, um, um, and, uh, you know, these guys are the movers and shakers that are driving the innovation in big data. We t we, in this $5 billion market study we did, yes, we had IBM, yes, we had Oracle, yes, we had, you know, HP, but... The guys that are really driving the innovation are, even though they've been acquired, the Verticas, the Green Plums, the Splunks, the Clouderas, the 1010 Datas, the Map Rs, the Digital Reasonings, et cetera. And those guys are the ones that are VC funded, they're moving fast, they got a gun to their head, right? They're competing like crazy against much, much more well funded startups. You know, Chris Lynch, I had him on the Cube the other day, he's the CEO of Vertica. He said, companies don't buy from startups because they want to. They buy from startups because they have to. Because startups aren't doing something that's 5% or 10% or 15% better. They're doing something that's twice as good or three times as good or ideally 10 times better. And that's why people buy from startups. Well, let's thank those sponsors, 1010 Data, Cloudera, Digital Reasoning. You guys are great. Thank you very much for your support. Did I miss anyone? I think we Map got R. everyone. MapR. Awesome. Um, so Dave, let's just jump into the news. Mark Risen Hopkins, our editor, just sent me some notes. We have our team already blogging heavily on siliconangle.com. You'll see a lot of flow on siliconangle.com. We have all the tech news coverage. That's where the action is. That's where the innovation is. That's where the future is. However, we got some posts coming out of this show there right now. Mark Hopkins is sharing me the news. The big news of the day um, in the industry is that Apple um, is announces the iPad event for March 7th. That's where they will unveil the iPad 3. And Dave, obviously, the death of Steve Jobs this past year has been brutal uh, to Apple, but they move on, right? And they're continuing to grow. Um, I mean, they have record bank and 
bank balance of cash. Um, and the iPad was featured at SAP Sapphire when they talk about mobility. It's really changed the game. And, and analytics and big data allow for applications like stuff on the iPad to work better. Business dashboards. Those kinds of new applications are coming out. Um, what do you think about how that has changed the world? Well, I think you're right. I mean, I think the idea of the app store for the enterprise, we saw that in a, in a big way at last year at SAP Sapphire. Um, you know, I think you're right about, uh, you, you know, j jobs. It really was difficult for Apple and, and the industry in general. I say what you want about jobs. You know, obviously there's a cult following. A lot of people will point out that he wasn't the nicest guy in the world, you know, especially earlier in his career, but um, built quite a legacy. And I think that, you know, my interest is, John, is how do great companies, you know, survive the death of their, you know, their leader, their founder. And, and Apple's got, you know, many, many billions. I think they got, what, 30 billion in short-term cash and investments, according to Google Finance. <laughs> 30 billion, that is some serious coin. Um, and they've, they're the most valuable company in tech. And so um, that's a starting point. But is it enough? Well, no, it totally is. Those guys are doing great. They have a great company. They're continuing to go, to go fast. And you know, you mentioned Steve Jobs, Dave. And you know, I just want to share with the viewers out there that uh, I'm working on a project right now that came across, via, believe it or not, LinkedIn. In this case, um, and the person emailed me. It turns out. I have a real passion for Silicon Valley history, and I've been looking at talking to folks who have been recording interviews going back you know, 10, 15 years ago with the founder of Intel's who, who passed away and a bunch of other pioneers in Silicon Valley. And so I'm supporting this project called the, the Silicon Valley History. And I got an email from a person uh, just a couple days ago that said that they actually have footage that's never seen before from Steve Jobs, one-on-one -on -one interview, documentary from Regis McKenna, the early days footage, some really epic early days footage of, of Steve Jobs, not seen by anyone, and it's proprietary to this person. I looked at the footage, I validated the footage, and uh, it's worthy enough for um, maybe a showing in downtown Palo Alto. So we're putting together kind of a proposal. If anyone's interested in financing it, we're looking to have a big meetup and to unveil this, uh, this footage of Steve Jobs. So I'm just throwing that out there as a plug for a project I'm working on. Again, this is unseen footage. I'll show Mark later. He'll drool. It's, I looked at it. It's fantastic. Uh, and again, this has never seen footage before footage of Steve Jobs with basically life lessons. It's really candid. It's really unique and special. So With, Re with Regis McKenna. Regis McKenna's in there. He was a very um, famous PR person. The original you know, marketing guy in that. there who was in there with him. All this early footage. And, you know, you can see the old footage. So I, what I want to do is run it as a big meetup. You know, have a big meetup with a couple hundred people, get some sponsors, and showcase that as kind of a eye candy and, and as a presentation. You so. know, s some other news today is uh, the Dow closed above 13,000 for the first time since 2008. Um, you know, Dow milestones, I don't know what you think about this one. You know, sometimes the, we've seen Dow, you know, close at a milestone and rock it up from there. Other times we've seen it not be able to hold. What do you think is going to happen this time? Uh, I think I think I feel good about it. I think a couple things that get my attention. Obviously, the financial crisis internationally seems to be uh, managing itself out, but I'm still worried about the overall economic climate. Personally, again, I'm not an economist. I just have that fear from what I read and what I'm thinking about. But I think the technology is not in a bubble. I think it's absolutely real deal. I think the big data market points to the fact that there's going to be a whole new generation of innovation and wealth creation around big data. Big data to me reminds me of the PC and the mainframe. Computing was locked up into uh, glass houses and the computer revolution unleashed all kinds of new software and services and value. With big data, I think you're going to see that locked up data evolve into open data, shared data, into data spaces or data factories, as Abhi Mehta would say, and s new services will be enabled. Those new services on top of big data, to me, is equivalent to the old software business. And from those services, new value will be created, new value in terms of top line revenue on businesses, society changing, and those impact from big data will create a massive revolution and a really a decades of, 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 of amazing ecosystem development. Well, Tim O'Reilly said on theCUBE last year, and I thought it, we, it was actually it was at Hadoop World, where he said that um, he, you know, he's, we, we all know Tim as a trend spotter, right? You're kind of a bit of a trend spotter yourself, but uh, so Tim had said, look, I, I was looking at, at software, and you know, the big, big mistake that IBM made is they thought that hardware was the competitive source of advantage, and it was really software, and Microsoft you know, proved that, and now, He's saying with open source commoditizing software, data is becoming the new source of competitive advantage and monetizing data is really what it's all about. And um, you know, he said that years ago. And so you yeah. know, credit to him. 
you know, he's uh, we're well, starting he's to always been on he's, well, he's been on the data privacy thing and he's been like protect your data. But I think Tim kind of lucked into it because what happened with with big data was interesting because personal data was something that's been um, close to Tim's heart. But with cloud computing and the, and the convergence of the networks, the convergence of networking, storage and cloud and compute created cloud computing. And with the mobility surge, it's been great. Um, and, and we talked about this, Dave. I mean, 2010 was what is Hadoop? You know, big data was kind of bad word, we weren't even being talked about. 2011, big data as a new business model, and the economics behind it became the theme. And then in this year, it's about platform maturity of big data. You're seeing the big vendors in there, $50 billion valuation by your, your recent report at Wikibon. And you know, the emergence of applications is, is, is really the focus. So to me, this is the year of platform maturity and application focus, and we're going to see a massive surge of innovation in 2013. I think 2013 is the year of wealth and money from big data. The platforms are, are maturing now, and we're seeing the applications start popping out of the woodwork from healthcare, financial, to journalism. Um, Excel Partners has a big data fund, $100 million allocated, so I think this is the year of establishment, Next year is the big revenue. Well, year. I think you know we know from firsthand experience it's not easy to do a Hadoop project, right? I mean, it's not you and I can't just start coding and, and do it. You know, it's hard for us to to really get in. And so with our CrowdSpots application and Vertical Engine, um, so l some work needs to be done there, right? Yeah. Well, what we did, I mean, we have guys at Cloud Era coding for us. We've been playing with HBase. We love HBase. HBase has been a fantastic architecture for us. Um, HBase is really hard to manage. You really can't. <laughs> it is no real. It's hard to get the kind of mainstream developer. Uh, on HBase. However, that being said, abstractions and commoditizing that, that integration will be good. Node.xl showed that killer spreadsheet this morning. That is something that a real person can do. So I think the innovation is going to come as the platform matures. You're going to see an explosion of simplicity tools where average people, analysts, workers, can actually self-serve themselves with data. So to me, data's got to be more open. Um, data can be commoditized, and, but also brokered. So I think you're going to see all kinds of new business models around data. I'm excited by that, uh, but then again, applications will drive that. So again, platform maturity. In 2012, making money in 2013 and beyond. Yeah, well I wrote uh, a story on, I posted on Forbes that said the $50 million, uh, 15, $50 billion market that you guys report is real and unhyped. And I posted this morning on siliconangle.com that I personally believe that big data is as big as the PC revolution. From an impact standpoint to society, you're talking about full global impact, you got mobile devices, you have new developer models, everything is forcing this new sea change where data was once locked in, very, very narrow, op owned by the operators of the data, now you have data that's open and free, you got consumer data, you have all kinds of geo data, so you're going to see craziness of data models out there. And Bill Schmarzo actually pointed it out where the data model will not be a lock-in anymore. So to me, this is the confluence of change of the business model, change of the technology, uh, and change of the actors in the ecosystem. So I'll test that premise a little bit with you because the, the, you're saying the big data is going to be as big, if not bigger, than the, the, the PC wave, right? And yep. subsequent waves have always been bigger than the previous ones. Yep. And, and okay, so the, you, got, you got that on your side. But out of the PC era came you know, Intel, Microsoft, Compaq, which of course got acquired, but Dell, and, and I would even argue EMC came out of the microprocessor-based revolution with smaller disk drives. But, and then you had the internet wave, and Amazon and Google came out of that, and the data wave. Are we going to see companies uh, coming out of this next wave that are as large? Could you, would you argue that Twitter is one of those companies no, and Facebook is one of those companies? No, not primarily. Well, it's, they're an actor, but here's what I would say. So the, all the examples you mentioned, client server, TCP IP, all those key disruptive enablers, every revolution has an enabler, some technology lever. So to me, I think like TCP IP enabled Cisco, 3Com, those networking guys. Um, the HTTP enabler, the web enabled Netscape and a bunch of others. But I think, to me, the PC was not just an enabler, it was a concept, it was a revolution because computing was narrow. Uh, glass house computing, and, the, and you know, we're, P, we're PC generation, so the PC brought computing to the individual. The individual now can do Excel spreadsheets, they can do business productivity, so Microsoft is born, applications are born. So to that effect, it's, it's a combination of some disruptive enablers, but it's an absolutely uh, changing of a complete industry. It's a creation of an industry. The PC revolution created an industry. 
So I think big data in my mind will create a whole new industry. It won't be the computer industry, it'll just be uh, someone will come up with a name for it. I don't know what to call it. Well, but the key is then putting that data in the access of, of, of business users and individual users' hands, isn't it? Well, I think the key thing is data in the hands, but the key is the developer communities. So when you look at the open source revolution, all this stuff kind of adds to it, some leverage to it. It's all this trajectory going on in the industry. So with all that's boiling over, open source, compute that's free, storage is getting cheaper, Fusion I.O. with Flash, you have all the, the building blocks that once cost a lot of money, as they say, to build a startup, all there out there as available resource. Data is the resource that's the problem. Data is the bottleneck. I mean, compute is sitting idle, the data is the bottleneck. So to me, I think the, the change is going to be the developer community having access to the kind of raw materials and the data, and having the data being available as part of the development process. And I think that will fuel uh, a generation of a new industry and a new new generation of entrepreneurs. And, and events like this underscore how uh, data is changing various industries. And and you know Alex was just sitting in on uh, how big yeah. data is changing the journalism <laughs> business. And uh, be interested to hear how that.